And the first thing I noticed in the early shakedown runs of riding it around, and I think a few of you pointed it out on the initial video, is that the clutch is slipping very slightly. When you put it on a real load, maybe flip the clutch in order to say pop a wheelie or something, it just spins up and it's not gripping. There could be a number of reasons there's a problem with that. So let's get this cover off, but there's oil in there. So let's drain the oil out first, whip the cover off and see what's going on. That's the oil drained out and the filter changed in readiness. There's certainly a chrome one instead of a black one, makes no difference whatsoever, the belly pan will cover it up. When you put an oil filter on, I'm sure you know this yourself, wet the surface of the oil filter, that rubber seal that's around it. They've got an oily Vaseline covering on them anyway, but dip it in the fresh new oil, get it all nice and oily. Oily surface on the front of the engine as well. Wind it in, touch base, and then it's a half to a quarter of a turn after that and that will seal every single time. You do not need to wind it in and swing on it. Winding it in more won't seal it anymore because the rubber ring that seals your oil filter sits in a little U-shaped track and then sits proud. As you wind it in, you squash it into that track so it fills it and that's the seal. You're not squashing anything once it touches base, you're just grinding metal. So once you've done that half to three quarters of a turn, that's all. If you get a little tiny bit of weepage underneath, give it another fifth of a turn, that's all you need to do. Right, that's the oil drained out, now let's get the cover off. Okay, with the oil drained out, Next thing, and we're assuming obviously you've got the side fairing of your bike off, we've taken off the expansion bottle which lives here, it's just two screws that go into that casing, remove that, tuck it in out of the way, and you get yourself to the clutch case itself. Make sure that there's nothing else in the way because we're gonna undo the bolts now on this. Now there are, it's large aluminium cast casing, and that means they need to be bolted up in a star pattern, which means never undo two bolts next to each other at the same time always come across to the opposite bolt. So we'll start with this rear one, then we'll come across to this corner one. We'll just do them as we go. Just gonna crack them, that's loose. Then come across to this corner one, do that one. Don't do either of these, then come across again to the furthest one away you can, like that. Then come down here, And then up to there. And what you're doing is releasing the pressure on the casing in an even way. All the pressure is now off the case. There's just that one at the back, which is pretty tight. It's not tight against the case, it's just got a lot of resistance in the thread. I'd say that's been thread locked. We'll check whether the thread itself is okay. Okay, that's just thread lock, that's good news. If you get bits of wire, like a little coil come out, then the threads come out with it, you've got to repair the thread later on. So that's cool. Right. Right now, the bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them, that hold that casing on are slightly different lengths. So when you put them down on the bench, you can do that and put them in order. That's the lowest one, which goes right down here in the lowest hole on the casing. So using that as the start reference point, your six o'clock if you like, put that at the lowest, 
then work up the side of the casing, put them in order. If you're worried that you might move them or knock them or shove them out of the way, then you can stick them through a piece of cardboard in the order they should be, if necessary, number them, whatever works for you, so that when you come to reassemble it, they're all in the easy order, so they'll all go back into the correct holes when you come to do it back up. As you can see, these have been thread locked as well. That's from the factory, that red stuff, so we'll be putting a little bit of thread lock on those when we put it back in. There we are. Anyway, now, let's pull the casing off. And there it is. Now be careful, there's a couple of little dowel locating pins here and here, careful not to lose those. The gasket's come off in one piece, but we're not going to reuse it. It's just nice to see that there's no issues there. I don't think that's ever been off from day one. There's no RTV on there, no nothing. That's just the original factory fitting. Love it that way. Right, what I'm actually doing today is just going to replace the friction plates inside the clutch pack. That's all for now. Because the clutch is slipping, there's no juddering, there's no rattling, there's nothing I think or suspect is broken elsewhere. All I'm going to be doing is a very simple task, just replacing the friction plates, which I've got soaking in oil. So to get them off, you take the pressure plate off the outside that's held in place by the six springs. They are a very low level torque, so they should all crack one at a time. Do them again, always in a star pattern. <laughs> okay, now as you do them, you do the whole lot in a star pattern. You actually release them in a star pattern, not just crack them. So meaning, don't just take three out one side and leave the other three in, because that will distort the pressure plates, potentially. Once they're all out, drop the pressure plate off. There we are. Now, what you may get if you do this, now and again, is the retaining screw will bring out the whole bolt. It's not an issue. What you do is take it there. You've got a hex on that and just undo it later on once it's out. And that's it. That's all the bits we need for there. This came out, so with that, so we we'll just pop it up here, back in, and torque that back in to its correct torque. Right, there we are. Now they don't very often come out, but if they do, just torque it back into place, hold the hub still, with a 36 mil socket, and then just make sure they're all torqued in so that when they put the pressure plate back on, the torque setting on the top screws is also equal and the screws are held in to the right thickness. Right, now the next thing is to take out all the friction plates and steel plates. They all just come out by hand. So the hub, there we are. Right, so there we are, that's my clutch pack. Uh, combination of friction plates and steel plates. And we're gonna have a good look at that in a minute. This whole job is about inspection, detection, trying to find out what might be wrong, what might be causing it to slip. Now this is, before I get involved in this, that I'm gonna replace every other one off, I'm gonna go into the basket and just double check. Now clutch housing, clutch basket, call it what you like, this is the first thing to be inspecting once you've got all that out. Check down at the base, if you look right down inside there, might have to put the light on that, you can see that right down at the base of this inner basket, you have a smooth metal surface that a friction plate bears against. So just inspect that for any scores or scratches, or any bluing, any distortion, any blue sections around it, it's absolutely fine, that's lovely. So that's good. The next thing to inspect is the teeth. This obviously is a pulley. If you like, it looks a bit like a pulley. It's got these teeth along it. So run a finger in along them all and make sure there are no notches or nicks because if we take one of the steel plates, these slip into there. And obviously 
there's twist torque bearing against these teeth and these metal teeth here, a bit sharp on the edge, over the course of time they can dig in to these teeth and start causing little ruts in them, little burrs in them and if there's a burr in that slot anywhere it's going to stop the clutch plates moving freely in and out. So just run a finger in and in along the length of each one and make sure there are no little burrs sticking out, no little cuts or grooves in it and damage to it. Once you're happy that that's all okay, do the same with the outside because again, the friction plates, they live, most of them, all except one. Where are we? Let's get it in, let's get it in. There. They live in there. So again, as this thing is torque, as it's twisting all the time, as a clutch does, then these outer teeth here are bearing against these slots here. Now if you look closely down inside, you might be able to see, perhaps in here, there are these little shiny marks and these little marks, these little polished sections are where the teeth from the plates have just notched against them. Now you're going to get that, this is aluminium, so you're always going to get this polishing but the thing again to do is run your finger along each one, inside and outside and just make sure that none of them have got rough burrs on and that they're not too grooved. You're looking along that edge all the way along like a castellated groove in there. Now they all feel a little bit textured on this, so this is clearly the original clutch basket, but it's not too bad at all. Now what you can have, well what can happen is if these grooves in here, or if these little marks become too grooved, too deep, then when the clutch plates have to slide in and out, or open and shut, separate and rejoin, they have to move and they have to slide on this basket. If the grooves in there are too deep, they're not going to slide, they're going to hang up and they're going to refuse to move. So what happens is your clutch plates don't open up fully. You get some of them that will stick together. So you get a reduced clutch action and it can actually overheat and burn and cause all sorts of problems and then warp the plates. Once these start warping, they have to be dead flat. If they warp at any point, then they're, not, they're just trashed. You have to replace them because the clutch just will slip the whole time. But there's nothing in there that gives me any cause for concern. I'm happy with that. It is worn. It is a 30,000 mile, 20 year old clutch basket, but there are no sharp edges, nothing cut in my rubber glove. So I'm happy with that. Just obviously the action as well, make sure everything's smooth, no play in anything. Once you're happy with that, then it's time to have a look at the clutch pack itself. So let's get that over on the bench. Okay. Now the pack, you'll notice, the pack begins and ends with a friction plate. So there are more friction plates than steel plates. I'm just gonna lay it all out. All is and they're not different all these plates are the same so all the friction plates are the same there we go okay now I'm going to replace all of these these are the friction plates this is a cork material and it's not worn out you're looking for these little grooves in between if they're still there that shows you they're not worn out they'll get to the point if you're unlucky where they're absolutely worn completely smooth and that's when everything starts to go bad so they're all right for the moment, but they're very hard. And this is very glazed up. That feels very polished, very solid. There's nothing yielding about that at all. And when we see the new ones, you'll see, if we grab a new one out of the oil, just feeling them, you can feel they're totally different. There's a softness to that when you stick a nail in it. There's a little bit of yield, a little bit of movement in them. In these ones, there's absolutely nothing. They're rock hard, old, glazed up. So let's take all of these out because they are going in the bin and now we've just got the important bit which is the steel plate. Now the thing with this is cost. What I'm trying to do is make this a cost effective repair. Apart from the hours labour that you'll pay a shop or a garage to do this for you, these parts do have a cost. A packet of these friction plates, which is what I've got steeping in the oil here, they cost £41. That's right, yes. They £41 do. Pounds from Wimoto, that comes as a complete pack from the Gecko Clutch kit. You can buy an EBC kit, they're about £60, just a better quality I guess, but the Gecko kit is all it needs. That's absolutely fine. I've got those, £41 for those. Now, if you're gonna buy these as well, Wimoto have got those also, but they're £7.20 each. So there's another 50 quid for those. So I'm gonna try and keep the bill down if I can. Looking at those, they're fine. I wanted to take them out before I made the decision. Had I took them out and these were all trashed and warped and really nasty with skid lines around them, then I'd have replaced them 
they do a 24 hour delivery, I can phone Momoto today and they'll be here tomorrow. So that's not an issue, you don't have to buy them up front just in case, that's an expensive way to rock and roll. Also I'm going to replace the clutch springs as well, but we'll come to that in a minute. So for now it's just these friction plates that we're actually replacing. These, having inspected them, I'm absolutely fine with that. There are scorch marks, a lot of you might be thinking, why don't you just replace them? Well it's 50 pounds, there's your answer. I don't want to spend 50 quid on a set of plates that are perfectly serviceable, and yes they are perfectly serviceable. Again, finally, if you look at the plates, the little dots that you see in them, they're not worn away, there are no score lines around them, they're nice, just been hot. They got hot where the clutch has been slipping, but with a new set of friction plates, they'll be absolutely okay. If it's still slipping after this, then I can simply get a set of these and bolt them in as well, if that is the issue, but that isn't it. Again, I've been doing this a long time. I've put clutch steel plates in worse than that, and they're absolutely fine. They do get blue, they do get hot marks on, because the clutch gets hot, that's what it's all about. And that brings one final point about getting this new set of plates in the oil overnight at least, I'd say at least 12 hours. The idea of that is that these are cork. The actual material on there is a cork material and it needs to be impregnated with oil because when you put it together with these, obviously that's all squashed together. Yes, there's oil in the clutch case. Yes, there's lots of oil around it. However, when you put them together, if you put them together dry, then you'll never really get enough oil in between to impregnate that cork. So the cork itself will stay dry in parts. That means it will immediately overheat and it will not only warp these, but then it generally will warp the steel plates as well. Again, if you're ever concerned about the steel plates, if you're worried about the wall, pop them on a sheet of glass, you can see straight away whether they're flat or not. But those are absolutely cool, they're going back in. I'm going to build all this back up, put it back in the basket. Here we go. Okay, as I said, it begins and ends with a friction plate. So first of all, we pop a friction plate in. Then a the steel plate. And this goes on <laughs> until you run out. Okay, now make sure that when you put them in, every single one slips into place neatly. There's no resistance or force. Don't force anyone in. Make sure they all rattle in nice and gently up against each other. And a little squeeze and they'll ring out. Basically squeezing them together will ring out the excess oil. And then there's just the final friction plate. Now the final one, on this particular bike, I would always recommend get yourself a manual and look at how your clutch works. As you can see, looking closely at here, there's these notches that all the plates go down, all the friction plates, but then there's one in between. So the final friction plate on this particular bike goes into that alternative notch, not into the same one as the rest. That's the final friction plate. Make sure it goes into that notch, not into this one, because then you won't, your clutch won't operate properly. Okay, all in place, ready for the pressure plate on top. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you soak them properly overnight in oil. All that will drain down, that's not an issue. Doesn't matter how messy it is. But if they're properly soaked, then they'll operate and they'll work correctly. If there's any dryness in there whatsoever, if any of this cork-based material is not properly soaked in oil, they, the clutch will overheat quite quickly, and that little tiny bit of blue you see, which is nothing, it will start going purple and, and yellow and green and all sorts of mad colors, and then the steel plates will warp and you'll bugger up your clutch. It's very important, it makes it quite clear. This is the Gecko clutch unit I got from Wimoto. It makes it quite clear on the rear. Gecko clutch friction plates are manufactured from cork-based material, similar to that of the original equipment, and we recommend that they are soaked in engine oil before installation says it on the tin and also it will say in your manual as well it's extremely important it's a wet multi-plate clutch it must therefore be wet it's in the name okay right friction plate on and put the springs in but before I put the springs in I'm going to show you the new ones and show you why I'm putting new ones in it right also on the gecko clutch pack box it does make another recommendation it says we always recommend the new clutch springs are fitted when changing the clutch due to the heat fatigue of the old units what they're talking about is the original clutch springs with the heat that's been in them they'll get a little bit soggy over the years. So I've got myself a set. I've got the Gecko Clutch Heavy Duty Spring Set. Okay, I'm gonna pop them down this end. You can probably see straight away, they're made from slightly thicker wire. We'll just take that one. As you can see, thicker wire and a little taller and less coils. And that one, thinner wire and definitely softer, definitely. 
So what that's going to give me, as that's a heavy duty spring set, it's going to give me a little bit more beef at the, at the lever. Obviously if you're doing anything robust with your bike, if you've got a sports bike and do some stunts or anything like that, flipping the clutch to do wheelies and so on, a heavy duty clutch spring set is definitely a way to achieve that. It stops it slipping because when a clutch starts to slip, that's when you get extra wear, overheat the plates, warp it, whatever. So that's definitely a good preventative thing, a set of heavy duty clutch springs. And these, with the clutch pack at 40 quid, these were a further eight pounds. Just eight quid for a set of heavy duty springs. Why wouldn't you put them on? So there we are. Let's rebuild all these, pop the pressure plate on and screw them up. I'll show you a little method how to fit them so you do them the correct way. Okay, so when you've got them in and everything's snucked into place, the springs need to go in in three, two or three increments rather than all the way in. So don't screw one all the way in and then do the next one. Even in a star pattern, they must go in a couple of turns at a time. So all I tend to do is start with one, one, two, and then one, two. Just keep your star pattern. One, two, one, two, and that way, until they're all the way into base. Two, start again. One, two. That's it. So they're all done up now, all hit base at the same time. Everything snapped into place. That's ready to now torque up. Okay, the factory torque specification on these is 8.8 .8 Newton meters. Start pattern, obviously. I'm using this Weha one that gives me up to 14 newton meters. So this is right for the job. Now, low torque settings like 8.8 .8 newton meters for something like this, they're not necessarily about making sure it's done up tight enough. In fact, they're there to make sure they're not done up too tight and you're not stripping anything off. And also at the same time, that all of them are even and tightened up to exactly the same torque spec. And that's where investing in something like that or a cheaper one, just a small torque wrench, a little quarter drive one, so you can do that sort of thing up every single time. Doesn't cost a lot of money, that's quite an expensive tool. I use it all the time. If you don't justify it with that, get a cheap one from any of the tool companies you trust. They're absolutely fine and they will help you make a good job of things like this. Just gonna run over them again, one last time. Job done. Okay, now we've got to change the gasket, put the cover on. Right, always check before you go ripping your old gasket off that's in good condition that you've got the right one to replace it with and it we've all been there. Yep, that's the right one, good. Okay, let's get this one off. little trick for you if it helps. Got the gasket ready to go in place. I've stuck the gasket to the casing with blue Hylomar. You can use RTV or whatever you want to do. This particular blue Hylomar product you can get it on eBay, online, whatever. In fact I've used up some of my old one. That's the old packaging. Same stuff, blue Hylomar. And the idea is if you stick the gasket to the casing and then you just put regular grease on that between that face and the engine casing. So the engine case in itself, if that's got gaskets stuck all around it, trying to get it off when it's on the engine case with all bits dropping into the clutch, it's just a pain in the backside. If you can put it on the bench and stand there and scrape that off nice and, nice and cleanly without any of it going in the engine, it's better to do that. So if you stick the gasket to the casing, then when you take it off in the future, it all comes off connected to the casing and none of it remains on the engine. So don't stick gaskets to the engine. You can just use like this, regular grease, on the paper gasket. On this side, it was still seal, believe me, I've been doing it for years, it works very well. Just don't put it on bone dry. And that nice seal, if you ever need to get it off in the future, it will come off intact on the casing. There we go. And also, just a final word, 
If you're going to use Blue Hylomar, it is a product that never dries. The characteristics of it are that it stays sticky. It, it remains a sticky blob forever. So if you put too much on the inside there, big fat sausage of it round, what will happen is when you squeeze that joint shut, as much as it might ooze out and you can wipe it off, remember the stuff that's going to ooze in where you can't wipe it off. That will then break away and it will drift around in your oil and bung up the oil strainer in the sump and lead to oil starvation. So as a real word to the warning, if you're going to use Blue Hylomar, never use too much. Always use it sparingly. Let it kind of dry and then stick the gasket to it because it kind of forms a, a tacky bond and then put it on. As I said, sparing, always. Anyway, let's bung it on the bike. Okay, on this particular casing, you've got two locating dowels to locate the, the, the case exactly in position. On some of the earlier models, you don't have that. And there's a little trick. All you need to do is take a bolt, a spare one or a couple preferably, and cut the heads off them, and then put a little slot in the end of the head to make them a screw, like a grub screw. Screw them into the casing there like that, and then you've got a dowel. You can put the casing over it because you've cut the head off, then when you screwed a couple of screws on to hold it in place, you can get a screwdriver and just take those out. So you can make dowels with an old screw if you don't have them. Simple way to do it, and it prevents it being misaligned, sliding the gasket out of position, and then causing problems trying to seal it in the future. So I've got dowels, luckily, because this is a 99 model. So let's just pop those in first. Right way up, there we go. That's it, there we are, all evenly torqued up, nothing too tight, nothing going to leak, just put the sump plug in, fill it up with oil. Okay, there we are. Clutch friction plates, uprated heavy duty clutch springs, new gasket, new oil and filter. Took just over two hours, including filming, messing about, taking the time to get that gasket off properly and put a new one in there in the right way. Really happy with the results so far. The clutch action feels superb, 100% improved. Even just pulling it in and out in order to open them up, and get all the oil in between there. And that's probably a perfect example of why the problem was those springs. They're heat fatigued, they're all soggy, the old clutch springs definitely need a replacement. Stick a new set of friction plates in there as well. There is, as I said, as you saw, a little bit of bluing on the plates, but nothing drastic. They'll always be like that when you pull them out. It's quite normal, but what you're looking for that would see signs of trouble would be skid marks around them where they've literally been scraping and there's none of that whatsoever. So they're absolutely fine. I put them in far worse than that and they work just fine. No problem at all. Now, a job like that, that's cost 83 pounds just by a few pence in parts. That's for the friction plates, the heavy duty springs, the gasket, plus obviously the oil and filter on top. I'm not counting that in with it. That costs whatever it costs. As far as labor's concerned, you'd be looking at about an hour. So I think with the VAT, it would comfortably be a 200 pound job if you took it to your local garage. And that doesn't need to be that way. It's not difficult. You can do it yourself. Investing in little things like a torque wrench to do up all of these sensitive little screws, that's quite important. And that's why you can justify those tools because they'll save you money in the long run. 200 pounds to take this to your garage to be done. Do it for yourself for 83 quid. Far better way to do it. Link in the description underneath to all the parts in this from Wimoto. If you need any extra parts for your bike, go on their website, search your bike, and then look for the parts individually. If you have any problems, give the guys a ring on the phone and they'll send it to you just what you need. And again, 24 hours delivery. So you don't even need to buy those extra parts. You can wait till you get it apart. If you find you need something else, just order it on the phone and postpone the finish of the job for 24 hours. So there we are, last word to Penny Feet. Ride safe, everyone. Ride safe. Thank you for watching. Take it easy and we'll see you next time. Master of the sun, memories fall in love.